Today we're back again working on my 2003 SL500 because it has a serious problem. Now hopefully you guys heard that horrible screeching sound, but if not, the rear caliper has completely seized up and it's holding the brake pad closed and you can already see signs of that on the rotor, but let me get this wheel off so I can give you guys a better look. So with the wheel off, you can see that it's literally chewed a line and all these grooves into the rotor itself. And look at all these metal fragments everywhere, all these metal particles. And you'll notice there's literally no more brake pad here. We're down to the metal on this side. The other side's good. We're gonna replace it all anyway, but it seems like what we're gonna need to do, which I have the parts for, is caliper's gonna get replaced, brake line, brake hose is gonna get replaced, the soft one, and obviously brake pad and rotor all has to uh, has to go. But it's gonna be interesting because that looks pretty rusty over there, but I think we can uh, we can get it done. First thing that needs to come off is the brake pad hardware and then the slider pins, which is unscrewed using a Torx bit. Once the slider pins are out, we can successfully remove the caliper from the bracket itself. Wow, so check out how bad these brake pads are since we got the caliper off. Look at how thin these are. This is nuts. You can see how it's pretty much been grinding metal on metal here. Even made a lip on the brake pad. I have never seen damage this bad. This is so tiny. Look at the back one. This one's like even worse. It's even chewed through this part of the brake pad. I have literally never seen this. This is, this is really, really, really bad. All right, but now that we got the, the caliper off, we're gonna remove the caliper bracket it, and then we're gonna start trying to figure out how to get this whole caliper brake line off. Using an S-hook to suspend the caliper, I was able to access the two 18 millimeter bolts holding on the bracket. They're a bit tight, but once loose, they will come out really easy. With the caliper bracket off the car, the next thing we're gonna have to do is remove this rotor and check out how nasty that screw is. I, I think we can get it loose. I have a couple of tricks, but uh, we're gonna put some PB Blaster on this, let it sit for a little bit, and then we'll try to unscrew it with, uh, with an impact. with the rotor out of the way, the last step is just unscrewing right in there the brake hose. Once we get that off, we can start putting all the new pieces back onto the car and we should be good to go. And then we'll have to bleed the car too. For anyone attempting this at home, I just kind of want to give you an update. Obviously, I sprayed it down with some WD-40 to loosen it up here, but it doesn't look like this pulls out. It looks like it's a bracket, so we're literally just going to unscrew this old hose and remove the caliper at the same time. And we're gonna replace it with this one right here. You can see I've already set this up. I have a new brake hose and I also have a brand new ATE caliper. I have all the parts that we're gonna need to replace both calipers on either side right here. Uh, some of you guys may be wondering why we're replacing the brake hose. And sometimes with these old cars, considering it's a 21 year old car, sometimes the inner tubing of the brake hose can fail. And then what happens is it pretty much traps brake fluid inside the caliper. And these are only like 15 bucks. So it makes sense just to replace these anyway while you're in there. And it might even be easier. So we are going to replace these. I got all these parts from FCP Euro, except the rotors, which was Rock Auto. I'll put links to it all down in the description below, but this is an ATE, basically an OEM, not a Mercedes brand, but they make the caliper for Mercedes. And all they do is just stamp Mercedes here. 
This is from ATE, it's brand new. It doesn't come with any of the hardware, so we're gonna reuse it. And um, I got some Pajid or Pagid, whatever you call them, brake, uh, brake pads too. So we'll be, we'll be locked and loaded in a second. I hung the new caliper on the car. This way it would be easier to install the brake hose when it's time. Using an 11 millimeter wrench, I was able to unscrew the brake line fitting, although I do recommend using a flare wrench if you have. Once the old brake hose came off, I was able to quickly screw in the new brake hose to reduce the amount of fluid loss. Lastly, I just sprayed it down with some brake clean because brake fluid itself is highly corrosive. So just like that, after tightening it up, we are all set. The brake hose is on, the caliper is on. So it's now time to just reassemble this side and then I'm gonna go do the other side of the car and then we'll bleed the entire system. As you can see, I just took it all off in one piece, I figured, it'd be much easier and it was doing it that way. It actually unscrewed quite easily. And honestly, I don't think we'll even be able to compress this, but you can see how far out it is. Something in here failed, either the brake hose or the uh, the piston in this itself. Now, before I go ahead and install the new rotor, it's important to clean the rust off the hub. This way you get a proper flush fitment and also to prevent the rotor from seizing on the hub. Once I wire wheeled all the rust off, I put some anti-seize on it to prevent further rust buildup. Once the new rotor is clean, it's time to reinstall everything backwards. First the rotor goes on, then the set screw, next is the caliper bracket. I put some brake grease on the pads to prevent squeaking, and then we can install the caliper, slider pins, and brake pad hardware. guys, we have officially replaced everything on this rear left side. Now I'm gonna just go work on the other side of the car. Might as well do everything in pairs because who knows, the next one's probably, the right side's probably gonna fail soon anyway. But um, I'm gonna do the right side really quick and then you'll catch me after that side is done and we'll bleed the brakes. And here is a quick peek of what everything looks like when it's all put together, nice and shiny. I don't think these pads have been done in years. So it's nice to see everything went in smoothly. New brake line is on. And always, if you're gonna replace a caliper yourself, it is very important to remember that the bleeder nipple is always at the top of the caliper or you will always be letting air into the caliper. Just a quick update, unlike the left side, the right side has a brake sensor. So just remember to unscrew this and also unplug it. It looks like this. And all you use is like a little uh, pick like this and you can unclip it and then pull it out and you're good to go. I'm replacing mine, but you definitely don't need to if, if you don't have a brake light on and it will screw right into over here. I'll show you what it looks like once it's all put back together. So check it out. I have the brake pads back on and all, the only thing left is just plugging in this brake sensor here. All you do is push it into the brake pad right here and then you just angle this into the brake sensor right here, the actual piece, and it will click clip in just like that now. And now we're good to go and you've officially wired your brake sensor. So I totally got carried away and completely forgot to record the brake bleeding process, but I will explain super quick how to do it now. I am by myself, so I do have my Motive brake bleeder kit. This it makes doing brakes and bleeding brakes extremely easy by yourself. It is an awesome, awesome tool. Basically, all it does is pressurize your uh, brake master cylinder and all you do is crack the bleeder screw and it literally bleeds itself out and all the air bubbles. I really wish I recorded it, but I will show you how it is done without actually doing it. As you guys can see, this is the Motive brake bleeder and it's basically not really a vacuum, but it's a pump and it pressurizes your brake system here. What I did was with this dial here, you wanna only pressurize the system between 10 and 15, nothing more. You test it empty to make sure that it's holding pressure. Once you can confirm that it is, then you can pressurize it by pouring some brake fluid in here. And all you do is uh, crack the bleeder screw. You can see I put 
a uh, quick connect on here, super easy. This way I can just un unclip this and I'll be good to go. And this is a 45 millimeter uh, screw that goes onto the brake uh, master cylinder reservoir here. So extremely easy. I'll put all the links to this down in the description below. And I'll also show you briefly how it's done. But this is pretty much all you do. Then you just crack the bleeder screw and you can fill this up literally right here. You can see this is my power bleeder. I bought this too, but you can pretty much use anything here. And what you do is you just put this on, on the uh, bleeder nipple, crack it open, and it will just fill itself up with bad, you can see all the bad brake fluid and the good brake fluid on the top. Pretty nasty stuff in here. And it's really as simple as that. It will slowly force the brake fluid and trapped air out of the brake lines. Then you just tighten the nipple up and you're done. The last step is also to just torque your lug nuts down to 95 foot pounds. So guys, that's gonna be it for today's episode. If you like the video, then definitely make sure to drop a thumbs up as well as subscribe. And make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions at all about how to install the calipers or bleeding the process, whatever it is, just make sure to drop one down below and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.